Alléluia. Alléluia. We bless the name of God. Alléluia. Alléluia. Father, we bless your name, Lord God, and we thank you for what you do. We thank you for guiding us, for speaking unto us, for doing thy work in us, and for showing us the way. We honor you for everything that you have already done, for everything that you will do in our midst, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I was saying, are you not willing to see and to be used by God for miracles and wonders? Let me explain you something. Some may have been born with an unappointed office. Hallelujah. But the one who is born again, which is a difference, Elijah or Elisha or what's his name? Jeremiah may have been born in an appointed office. And you and I were born again. And the Bible says, these are the signs that will follow them that believe. So who is a believer? Amen? It's not a requirement that you have to be an apostle first. Mm, Jesus, say, Lord, help me. There is no requirement for you to be first an apostle in order to have the signs that will confirm the word of God. There is no a requirement for you to be first an evangelist or to be a prophet or to be a pastor. The requirement is, is what? Believe. Hmm. But I have realized that the reason, one of the reasons, not the reason, one of the reasons why we do not operate in that dimension is not because God is not willing. He says, all you have to have is a faith that is our. Now, let me explain this one. Do you know you already have that faith? Aha. Uh -huh. Let me explain how. When the disciple asked the Lord Jesus to increase their faith, he said, if you just have as a small, as a martyr seed, you would say. In that answer, what he's saying is that what you already have can allow you to operate. Let me please. Hi, Jesus. Let's pray. Between the faith that you have in Christ Jesus and the faith for miracle, the only difference is the desire to operate. He says, desire the, desire the best gift. He did not say, have faith for the best gift. The lady who went to the Lord Jesus and touched the M and received a miracle, it was by faith, right? Amen? The one who brought the people unto Jesus Christ, the lame, and they said they went through the roof and they brought him down. The Bible said when the Lord saw their faith. In another word, is a trust that he is able to do something. So my question, do you trust that the Lord is able to do something? Let me go further. The faith that you have in the Lord Jesus qualifies you as a believer. And because it qualifies you as a believer, the Lord says, these are the signs that will follow those who Say, Lord, help me. <laughs> it says signs that will follow those who believe. Let me give you an example. Faith, 
for those signs is like money in your bank account. If you have money in your bank account, that money will not serve you if you don't use it. Hallelujah. Regardless of the amount that you have in your bank account, if you do not speak to that money to serve for something, it will not move. See, the unbeliever, they have faith for something. And they operate in that faith that they had. The only requirement the Lord has asked of us is just have that little, you don't have, you don't have master seed faith. Don't you have master seed faith? Pastor Martin, you don't have master seed faith. No, because, because I, have, I have to understand that the, the measure of the faith is asking is not a big faith. It's a small one. So if I have that small one, why I'm not operating into what I'm supposed to operate? Huh. Give me the word. Give back the, the same word that you brought. For I believe God. Hallelujah. Mark 16. Give, me, give back to me that. Put it on the screen for me. Mark 16. And we're going to read from that verse. 17. Hallelujah. Go ahead, please. Mark 16, 17. Uh -huh. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Give me that in Amplified Version, please. Jesus, Lord, help us. Mark uh, chapter 16, verse hey. 17, Amplified. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. Oh, Lord Jesus. There is in the miracle and the wonders, even though there is a working of it, there is also an instant of it. Hallelujah. Either you work in miracle or you perform in a sense of instant. The faith that the Lord is asking you and I is not a faith that is outside of what you believed him for. For these are the signs that will follow them that believe. When you pray and you lay hand on the sick, you have to remember that there is something that goes through your mind. If that question that goes through your mind, will that person be healed? At that point, you did not believe. Hallelujah. But on the basis of it, you have the faith to operate in that miracle. But as you are utilizing that faith, you come at the point of that faith and then you fall into the side of doubt. Uh, it does not mean you are without faith. Hallelujah. You only clouded your faith with doubt. Let's go back to hmm, John 11. In John 11, Martha had faith. Amen? That Christ can do something. It wasn't not faith. Was it not the faith that was required so that something can happen? Why Martha did not use that faith she had to automatically pray for her brother? Because she was not disqualified to pray for her brother. Are you what I'm saying? She had faith to call on the Lord Jesus. 
she also has that same faith to pray for her brother for him to be healed. You have faith to call on the Lord Jesus. That same faith is a faith that is required for you to see the goodness of God. To see the healing of God. Let me repeat it again. If you have faith as big as what? Seriously, tell me how big is the mustard seed? You're looking at a master seed faith as something there that you are supposed to attain. Not realizing you already have it. It says, stir up the gift of God that is where? That is where? Within you. If you already have it and you don't practice it, how can you see the fruit of it? Mm, Lord Jesus, help me with this one. Imagine somebody who's looking for a pen to write something. And the person put the pen on his pocket. Or he puts the pens over here, behind the, the here. And he's looking for the pen everywhere. And did, did you see my pen? Uh, oh, where is my pen? I, I'm looking for my pen. But the pen is on him. The reason why he is not utilizing the pen is not because he does not have it. It's because he does not realize it is on him. From the moment he comes to the realization that he has a pen, automatically he utilizes the pen. The measure of faith that is asked of a believer is the faith that believes. Let me read again. The measure of faith that is asked of a believer is only a faith that believes. He says, when you go, you will lay hands on this. Lord Jesus, help me with this one. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That wherever the Lord went, he did good. That as many as came, they were healed. So I'm thinking in my mind, I said, Lord, it was not two out of ten that were healed. When the crowd was pressing on him, it was not two out of three that was healed. The Bible said anyone that touched him were healed. So I started meditating on it. I said, it must be something outside of the requirement of the faith that is preventing the manifestation of that faith to be palpable. It ought to be something outside. Because the requirement for the faith is only be live. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. The Bible says our faith comes by what we hear. How many times have you not heard that the Lord said that you shall heal the sick? How many times have you not heard that the Lord said you shall do this, you shall do that? How many times have you not heard that the Lord says, I give you power and authority? Now, the question is, if you believe that Christ said what he said is true, then why is not happening? It cannot be God. Hallelujah. It cannot be because God did not want it to happen. It cannot be God. Have you ever been going outside? You saw a lame, somebody walking or somebody sitting in the wheelchair. 
and then you want to pray for the person, you have the urge to pray for the person, for the person to get up and walk. And that urge that you have is not kind of like a, oh, let me pray so that the person will get up and they will see I'm great. No, no, that's not the urge you have. The urge that you have is a compassion for the person that you see and you believe right there that the God can use you in order to grant that person a miracle. So the, the faith you have right there, it is to honor the name of Christ. And then as you go towards the person, the mind comes, but if it doesn't work, it will be shame. What if it doesn't work? You already start in your mind thinking how fool you will look like to go to somebody who's in a wheelchair and you say, let me, and in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. So you already have the outcome of it and the imagination of how bad it will look on you. That's where you now fall. Because at the beginning, you had the required seed size of faith. But as you are now going to perform it, along the way, the thought of the enemy just... <laughs> I told to minister, I said... I was starting, coming back. I said, Lord, I saw in my life, God doing like, like wonderful things. But I did not see in my life like evident miracle. I say it's not normal. It's not normal. It ought to be part of the ministry. Why? Because God, when he went out to preach, when the Lord went out to preach, Everywhere he went, the Bible said he did good. And the good was a tie to the demon that he was casting out to the heal of this, uh, the, the healing of the sea. I, I, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes people say, no, you are not Jesus. Yeah, you're right. I'm not Jesus. That's why I receive his authority and power. You are commanded. You are given to because you are not him. That's why you cannot do in your name. So yes, I'm not Jesus. But I have received from the Lord Jesus. You have received from the Lord Jesus. The authority to speak in his name. Let me tell you something. Even people who commit iniquity. They operate in the faith. Of healing. A miracle. Let me, let me read again. Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. From verse 20. Give me, the, give me that. Give me that, please. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Even those who commit iniquity, they operate in the miracles. Chapter 7, from verse 20. We have on the screen, please. Go ahead, please. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wherefore by their fruit he shall know them. Let me explain something quickly before we continue. The gift do not prove that your life is right with God. Ah, Jesus, help me with this one. Hey, the gift don't prove your life is right with God. So in another word, you can even operate in a gift when your life is not right with God. Are you following? How much more if your life is right with God? Are you following what I'm saying? Those outside of the covenant can do so. How much more if you are in the covenant? So the promise is an effective promise that functions by its principle. Whether you are in or not, the requirement is belief. Read, 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 read. Matthew 7, 20. Uh Wherefore, by their fruit, he shall know them. Mm -hmm. 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, mm. but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. The works of miracle are not for you to be accredited in heaven. It's not for you to enter heaven. What makes you enter heaven is the life of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit in your life. I, hallelujah. But on earth, God is appointing you so that on earth, those who are broken hearted, you can mend. Those who are blind can see. Those who are deaf, they can hear. Let me tell you something. Even if they've been dumb, 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 dumb for 38 years, does not matter. Read back for me, please. Please read back for me, Lord Jesus. Matthew uh -huh. 7, 21. Uh -huh. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name have cast out devils? Mm -hmm. And in thy name doth many wonderful works? And then? And then will I profess unto them, uh -huh. I never knew you. Depart from me, he that walk iniquity. Hallelujah. Amen. Even the one who work iniquity, they operate in the wonder. Are, are you reading? They said he was not in the name. They did not say he was in the name of Buddha. Are you what I'm saying? They did not say that they use whatever. They say in thy name. The requirement that they have fulfilled was a requirement of belief. Their sign shall follow them that believe. If the one that commits iniquity can do, bring him back please, 21. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I have cast out devils. You are agree with me that the Lord Jesus said that you cannot cast out devil out of devil. You, you, get, you get it? That you cannot cast out devils out of devils. So it was not the devil who was casting out the devil. But it's not because he's saying this that therefore the church is not asked to do so. In the sense of operating into the wonders of God. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. In the Catholic church where we grew up, the focus was only on your own salvation. Let me explain you something so you understand. The focus was your own, meaning all you have to care of is your salvation. No wonder the people, when they grow, they don't have the love for the lost. Are you know what I'm saying? Because the one who is lost, who can I care for him if only you care is your salvation? I did not say you do not have to care for yourself. I said if only what you care for. But the unbeliever, he needs a sign. <laughs> Let me explain again. When you go out and you speak the word of God and the hand of God and the signs, oh Lord Jesus help me, and the signs of God through you are being confirmed. The Bible said that the Lord confirmed his word with. When he was confirming, he was confirming among the believers. He was confirming most of the time outside with the unbelievers. I, 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 am I right? So even the Lord Jesus was so willing that when he was among the unbelievers, he did signs.
So you are not called to be refrained. Or you are not called to only have your expectation of salvation. You are not called to only have your family salvation. You are not called to only have your, your household salvation. You are called for the lost. When you go and you pray for someone, and then we say, Oh Lord, we pray that your will be done on this person. If it will be that will, let the person be healed. Well, what was that prayer we there for? Like, <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? How many times does a believer need to remind himself that the Lord has granted you power to cast out devils? Power to heal the sick. How, how many times? Well, I will tell you many times you have to be reminded. Because obviously, our minds start shifting, and then we start operating in, in uh, we start operating in, into the things that are more easier for us to grasp. There was a woman. She started praying that God will use her to heal the sick, and the more she was praying for the sick, the more they were dying. <laughs> you know, if you go pray for someone who is sick, and after you pray the person die, you yourself, you're already in trouble. Your mind, your thoughts start accusing you. The prayer you did, instead of the person to rise, the person die. One, two, three, 20 times. <laughs> When they call you for the next to pray, you yourself, you say, oh. <laughs> because you have anointing for death. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the lady did not stop. She didn't stop. All she knew is that she was called for that. She pressed on. And suddenly, one day, People start getting healed of cancer, terminal cancer. People start getting healed like randomly of terminal diseases inside the hospital, dying on the bed. They were signing the death certificate before when they were dead, meaning they were already gone to die. And then she saw the power of God healing and healing and healing. In another word, the work of the faith in you for it to be need you to work it out. You got to work it out. You got to work it out. We spoke of the blind man who was touched by the Lord and what happened? He saw people like a three. What did the Lord Jesus did? He continued. So there is a portion of that faith miracle that requires you to continue. You did it two, three, four, five, ten times, and there is no result. But you may think there is no result because you don't see the evidence of it. But the working has already started. So what is required for you is to continue to press on. He, Lord Jesus. You are required to press on. Give me Acts. Give me the word first. For I believe God. Hallelujah. This is the word we're going to, we are in the word right now, the message. For I believe God. Hallelujah. You will realize that 
sometimes what it requires the thing to happen for somebody else is your belief. It's not every time that a person needs to have faith in order for it to function. No. Very often time, it will be your faith on behalf of the person. Imagine somebody who is an atheist that is on the deathbed. Which faith you want to ask him? No. There are times where God's sovereignty without a requirement of faith just operates. Nobody pray for it. Just God in his own sovereign power. He says, let everybody be healed. That's what happened to A.A. Allen. He was a man of faith. But one day, they brought a child who had 26 diseases. His tongue was out over here. His hands were crunched like this. His feet was crunched like this. It was deformed. He did not have a male organ. A child of four years old. Imagine you're preaching and somebody come to you with a child like that. <laughs> the, first, the first thing that can cross your mind is let me pray for him after. Because if I pray for him now, it will be obvious for everybody that it did not work. If it doesn't work, they're going to take it and then put it on CNN. And either put it on CNN, I'm finished. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you already see the line. Anyway, so they brought him the child. When they brought him the child, the guy who spoke to the lady concerning faith, he has been preaching for the whole week. It was another guy who was called Shambak, R.W. Shambak. He preached for the whole week for a conference on faith. But he didn't pray for the lady. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. that's, that's reality. He didn't pray for the child. So finally, when Aelin started preaching, he said, the Lord is telling me to do this. And finally, they brought the child. And he started telling to everybody, close your eyes to pray. <laughs> and Ellen, I mean, the guy who was working with him, what's his name? Shambak. He said, I'm not going to close my eyes. I need to see. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he was, Ellen was working with the child. And everybody praying, praying. And then the, Shambak was in the back, looking, watching to see what's going to happen. It's not because your eyes are open, God will not do the miracle. Amen? And then you know what happened? The tongue that was hanging for four years suddenly slapped back. The ends that were crunched suddenly stretched up. But the other one is the blind. The eyes that were completely blinded suddenly shh, eyes formed. And then the feet, you know, when somebody goes to the um, um, what was that? wall and he got a amputation, you see the way he's rounded? That's how the feet of the boy were. Huh? The lips, limbs. But before the eyes of people, feet started growing. Hey, Jesus. Look at your face. <laughs> Feet started growing. Now, I thought to myself, I said, but why is that a story that we talk about ALN? What's the difference between him and you? What's the difference between Elijah and us? Hallelujah. What is the thing that was required for him to see 
the miraculous. Well, let me tell you, A. Allen did not always see the miraculous. He'd been having and doing ministry for 13 years, and then he did not see nothing happening in his ministry. But one day he realized that this was a portion of the ministry for which he was called. Realization. Hunger. And as he pressed in, suddenly the Lord started now opening up. And here comes his ministry was filled with the power of God. Remember, those who commit iniquity were able to perform miracles. Somebody help me with this one. How much more the one who works in his will? You cannot work in his will if you don't believe. Am, am I right? You cannot work in his will if you. Are you following Muhammad? Why? Because you don't believe in him. I, I even know what I'm saying. Why don't you pray Buddha? Because you don't simply believe. In the book of Luke, chapter 9. When the Lord gives power to the disciple two by two. You agree with me that Judah was inside? Hallelujah. When they came, you agree with me that Judah was part of those who also gave the report? Because the gift of God, the word of God says, is not for you, it's for the people. Hey, Lord, like it just flow, flow, flow in my mind. Like the gift of God are not for you. It's for the people. Can a wicked man, the most wicked man ever, is extremely wicked if he pays the fees for someone who is hungry. Is that not called good? If somebody is hungry. And you have the most wicked man ever. Who pay the food for the one. Who is hungry. Is not that called good? That good is done unto the one. Who is hungry. Hallelujah. Because it was done unto somebody else. It is called good. So our goals don't save us, but our good explain who we are in the Lord. Our good explain his goodness. That's why he's good both on the wicked and on the just. When he gives life and he holds the breath of life for everybody to live, he gives the breath of life for the wicked and the, and, and, and the, and the just. Are you what I'm saying? So you being a child of God, who been called to ministry, who been called by the Lord Jesus, he said the only requirement for you and I is to believe. These are the sign that we follow them that believe. One of the things that may refrain you to see the manifestation is literally the shame that he won't work. In other words, you will count on yourself, not on the Lord. In another word, the Lord is ready to manifest what he wants to do and dependently on you for the good of somebody else. The requirement for you is to believe and do. If you don't see it in your eyes, then press on. 
I said that neighbor, I have eyes on him. I must go. God, talk, talk, talk. I want to pray for you, for you to hear. The requirement for you and I is to, is to walk or to work out the gift that is in. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, help me. Give me back Acts, was that to Acts 27? Amen. Acts 13, verse, verse 27. Please put it on the screen for me, please. Acts 20, uh, 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 sorry, Acts uh, uh, 27, verse 13. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And when the south wind blew softly, mm -hmm. supposing that they had obtained mm -hmm. their purpose, mm -hmm. losing thence, they sailed close to Crete. Mm -hmm. But not long after, was caught and could not bear up in the wind. Mm -hmm. We let her drive. Mm -hmm. Verse. Oh, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But not long after these, after there arose against it a tempestuous wind mm -hmm. called Euroclidon. Mm -hmm. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Cloda, we had, we had much work to come by the boat. Mm -hmm. Which, when they had taken up, they used helps on the girding the ship and, f and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, mm -hmm. strike sail, and so were driving. Mm -hmm. And we be and we be exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, mm -hmm. and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship mm -hmm. and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared mm -hmm. and and no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away okay let me break it down for you quickly here before we continue paul was told by the lord jesus that he would go to rome amen before they started he was already stalled that he ought to go to Rome, and for that sake, he will arrive there. That's why when the people came to make the plan in order to deliver Paul from the Jerusalem prison for him to be killed, it did not happen. Because the Lord has sent a boy to reveal what they were planning to do. So the word of God was already spoken to Paul that you're going to arrive in Rome. But when things started getting really tough, when things started getting really foggy, cloudy, when things started getting really difficult and contrary to what God said, just like when you pray and you don't see as God said, just as you fast, just as you believe, just as you lay hand and you don't see the miracle, the Bible says that finally... And, and, and when neither sun nor star in many days appeared, normally the day is set to be day and night. But the more they advanced, the more they saw only the shadow and the night. They could not see. The, give me back, give me back, please. And when neither sun nor star in many days appeared, are you know what I'm saying? There is a place in, uh, in uh, is that Alaska? Where, of, uh, I don't know if it's still happening, but where it will be a long time of night and a long time of day. Hallelujah. So for so long, they were in the sea, they could not see sun nor day. And they started losing hope. It's not because you pray that it does not happen. Then it means it's not happening. Because in his case, the Lord already told him you will arrive in that place.
Give me verse 21. Verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood. After long abstinence. Abstinence. Hallelujah. Amen. He refrained for a long time. So because he was not speaking, things were going bad. Ay, ay, ay. Somebody is still blind because you're not, you're not praying. <laughs> are, are you following? Somebody is still lame because you're not praying. You're not laying your hands. Paul, in that boat, was the only guy who was able to turn around the life of everybody. Which type of boat God put you in where he's waiting for you to do something and you're waiting for God to do something? The entire boat and all the prisoners. <laughs> the boat has centurion and guards. And yet the life of the centurion and the prisoner was in the hands of Paul. Are you getting it? Because of your covenant with God. Please read again. But after... But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them. Paul stood... Forth in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. Remember, Paul himself started losing hope. Give me verse 20. Verse 20. Uh -huh. And when the sun nor stars in many days appear, uh -huh. and no small tempest lay on us, uh -huh. all hope that we should be saved. Tempest on them, all hope that they should be saved. Was completely. No, 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 no. Was is the Bible saying that he was talking about them or about we, us? He was talking about we, us. He was not saying their faith. He was not saying their lost hope. Hallelujah. They were all in the boat. And after many days and many sun did not appear, many sun did not appear, and no small tempest lay on us. It was also in a boat with the tempest. The Bible finally says, all hope that we, amen, should be saved, was taken, was then taken away. But you see, the Lord, when he called you, he said, these are the signs that will follow them. So the word was already spoken. The same way for him, the Lord told him that you will arrive to Rome for my glory to be so you can speak and preach the word. But he did not see it easy. But the word was already spoken. And I always love, I say love, love to take the example of the police officer. The police officer, the day is enthroned as authority to bring law and order. When he goes along the way, he has difficulty. He does not, you know, uh, go to look for his uh, degree or like his uh, uh, um, paperwork. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All he has to do is to remember that he was already invested for such a case like this. Sometimes I have to remind myself. I am anointed for complicated matter. Because when it's complicated, it's, it's there that you are anointed for. So it was an opportunity through Paul that the work of God be manifest. It's an opportunity through you. That the blind see. There was a guy, Jacques Cole. He was arrested for practicing medicine without license in the 50s. And you know what he did? Imagine. 
his ministry and God through him middle healed so many people. So many people were healed that they arrested him for practicing medicine without license. <laughs> The devil was so mad that hospitals were losing money that they arrested him for practicing medicine without license. The guy, he was called a reckless man of faith. <laughs> Say, Lord, make me reckless man of faith. No boldness. Reckless men of faith. You know, when the Lord Jesus healed the blind by spitting on his face and spitting on the ground, he was reckless. Are you following? That's what we call reckless. The guy, a man, a woman came, she had tumor in her belly. She stood. He was known to slap people to when he pray. So she was standing. He was praying, 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 praying. And boom! In her belly. The tumor disappeared. He was so... Like... He didn't... He did not ask you... Whether you have faith or not. People will come with a hearing head. At the moment they arrive, you start removing it and crushing it. What if it doesn't work? <laughs> Reckless men of faith. You will see somebody coming with a hearing head. You will say, oh, Lord, your hand is on the hearing head. <laughs> oh, Lord, let her hear. How do you know the person is hearing with a hearing head that you already has eyes? eyes. <laughs> that he's already in his ear. How do you know? He will take it. He will not just gently put it on the side. He will break it. You both come with crutches. The guy is standing with a crash. He, he, he snatched like shoo. <laughs> he was known as a reckless man of faith. But I guess what happened? God always confirmed his word. God confirmed his word so much that they had to arrest him and put him in a jail of Miami in Florida. They are blind who are still not seeing because you are not doing your work. Because we are not doing our work. People with cancer, they still have cancer because we are not doing our work. The Lord Jesus did not say, send the sick to the, to the hospital. That's the business. Hallelujah. Your business is not the business. Your business is the business of your father. Are you following what I'm saying? The business, he did not tell you to go break the hospital. He told you rather to empty the hospitals. Heal the sick. If the sick is not sick, will he go to hospital? Somebody is still blind because you are not praying for him. Say, 
Somebody is still saying the tempest because we are not laying the hands. When you see the neighbor that is deaf and mute, you say, hello. <laughs> but you know he does not hear, right? So you do your hands and your word. Hello. That's all you can do. After church, go pray for him. He is blind because you are not laying your hands. The lamb is waiting so that you lay hands on them. Somebody will say, but this prophet is telling his church to go. No, Jesus Christ is the one who said to do it. I'm just reminding us what he said. Luke 9. The Bible said the Lord called unto him the twelve and gave them power and authority over every unclean spirit to drive them out. And he sent them into the field. When they went into the field, they were not on the line calling Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Uh, target, 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 five, 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 oh, five. Is that this, this one I should pray for? <laughs> Hallelujah. They already received the mandate. When did that mandate expire? Tell me. Never. Are you what I'm saying? The mandate to heal the sick did not expire. The mandate for the lame to walk did not expire. The mandate for the blind to see did not expire. The mandate for the deaf to hear did not expire. The mandate for the possessed to be delivered did not expire. How many of you is ready to be reckless men of faith? Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got to be a reckless man of faith. Are you what I'm saying? Because I got to be somewhere where I see that God is manifesting his will, his pleasure in the life of somebody. I got to be a reckless man of faith. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's go back to Paul. Give me Paul. I said, give me Paul. Acts. <laughs> give me Acts. Go ahead. And when neither sun nor mm -hmm. stars in many days appeared, mm -hmm. and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Mm -hmm. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them mm -hmm. and said, Sirs, he should have yearned unto me and not have loosed from Crete, huh? and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. And now I exhort you. To be of good cheer. Stop over here for now. Paul is exhorting them to be of good cheer in the midst of big tempest and trial. The people who pray by faith, they say, come, the Lord will heal you and you will see. <laughs> they were not doing the random, you know, the usual... Okay, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. <laughs> the, the let's pray is just let's gather and let us pray. And then, no, they were literally the reckless men of faith. 
come. The Lord wants to heal you. He will heal you. So when the person was coming, the person was coming in the expectation to be healed. The person was coming to be healed. How many go to the doctor to the expectation to be healed? Most of the time when they go to the doctor, they already see the healing. Because they believe that the doctor has some kind of like a, I would say that, knowledge of something to help them be healed. The Lord is calling you and I so that somebody can be delivered. Somebody can be healed. And remember, if those who are committing iniquity, this one bothers me. Those who commit iniquity, they are still operating in wonders. How much? Those who are in the covenant. Give me back the word, please. And now I exhort. I exhort you to mm -hmm. be of good cheer. You want to reassure the person that now that you have taken the decision to, to move, God's going to make it. But that's what the doctor do. Go ahead, continue. And then what? For there, For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but, but of the sheep. Mm -hmm. For there, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul said, the God I serve. Hallelujah. The God I belong to. Do you have a God you serve? The God I belong to. It's not everybody who established doctrine. Hallelujah. But when it comes to healing, miracles, it's for everybody who believes. Not everybody is called to be Apostle or prophet or, in, you know, but he said, them that believe. Because in another word, apostle, there are some who don't believe. <laughs> Hallelujah, because the Bible says that some of them have crept in, not for the will of God, but because of the own belly. So they saw the work of God as an opportunity to make money. Hallelujah. For there stood by me this night, night the angel of God, who's what? whose I am uh -huh. and whom I serve, uh -huh. saying, mm -hmm. Fear not, Paul, mm -hmm. thou must be brought before Caesar. Now, listen, what he's saying over here, the Lord already told him prior. Listen carefully. When Paul was in Jerusalem, the Lord appeared to him to explain to him what he would suffer. How did, he, how did he forget this one? They told him, he told him already, you will go to Jerusalem. I, I mean, uh, yes. uh, to Rome. So he should have remembered what was already told him before. But that's men. Men need to be reminded. Men need to be reminded. That's why always the Lord always remind, 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 because you need to be reminded. And then he goes by saying, fear not. Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Are you following? He said the life of all of them is in your hand. If Paul don't move, everybody die.
Can you imagine? Like, can you, Im oh, Lord Jesus. Can oh, Lord God. Can you imagine the weight of the anointing and the ministry God has placed in your life? If you don't move, an entire, an entire generation can die. If you don't move, an entire people, community can die. If you don't move, an entire nation can fall. I don't know if you're realizing it. The Bible says, for the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are longing for it. Now, verse 25. Wherefore, sir, Wherefore, sirs, sirs, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. But there was no light and sun yet. There was no star. And he says, for I believe God. For I believe, believe God. God. You see? He didn't ask them to believe God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't ask them to pray. Are you following? He said, all I know is that the God I serve, the God whom I belong, he told me that your life is in my hand. If I abstain, you die. If I stand, you live. So all I know is thou must be of good cheer. For I, Paul, believe God. Hmm. <laughs> for I believe God. Mm. That it shall be what, going? That it shall be even as it was told me. That it shall be even as it was told M me. Me. But now, notice verse 26. Go ahead. How be it we must be cast upon a certain island. Uh -huh. But when the 14th night was come, mm -hmm. as we were dri driving up and down in area, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country mm -hmm. and sounded and found it 20 fathoms and rocks. Mm -hmm. They cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. But, and, and verse 28, and sounded and found Verse 28, huh? and sounded and found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and founded it 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished, and, and wished for the day. Verse 30, and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the fore ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldier, Except these abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, then the soldier cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. So, Paul was used by God to operate in the life. But you see, he not operate only in the spirit. He has to utilize the wisdom of God in the physical to do something physically so that uh, the salvation that were to have happens. If he was quiet, while the people, the sailor, were coming out, because the Bible says they pretended like uh, it was something they wanted to do a force ship, but they were just leaving the boat. Amen? And if they were leaving the boat, they would have left them right in the middle of that sea. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, they would have died. 
So Paul was vigilant. He said, God already told me you're going to leave. First thing he told me, I will arrive. But I forgot. <laughs> because I was tempest. So he had to remind me. When he reminds me, then the enemy is trying to trick to get out to live us here. Are you following? Be aware of your surrounding. So he told to the centurion, unless you get those people to stay in this boat, everybody gonna die. So they had to cut off the rope. Two things. Be aware of your surrounding and cut the rope that be holding you with your surrounding. Be aware of your surrounding and cut off the hope, uh, the rope that is holding you to your surrounding. Because you have a destination to arrive. All God is asking you, do you believe me? That's your masterpiece seed of it. If you believe. But now that you have it, you need to cut off some rope. Hallelujah. You need to cut off some rope. You need to stand and speak. You need to go into it. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. <sighs> you have to have so much of a great desire to see what God said he will do. That you don't give room to your circumstance and surrounding to define what you're supposed to do. Let me it again. Paul, see, I ain't, not, I ain't gonna give room to the circumstances and surrounding to define what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to arrive. Even if as I was going. I get in a place where things are so tough that I'm start questioning, am I going to really make it? God will remind you that he told you you will make it. Stand on it. That's the goodness of God. That's the grace of God. In the midst of the tempest, when you start losing hope, hallelujah, he still come to remind you where he started with you. He still comes to remind you your destination. He still comes to remind you that you are supposed to get the rope cut off. And he still comes to remind you that it's not the people who have to pray. It is you who have to believe. Hmm. He said four. I believe God that it will be done unto us as he has told me. Even the people who were in the city of the blind men the Bible said when Christ was passing by, they brought that blind man to the Lord. People were not walking with God. They knew how to bring the blind man to God. And you walk with God and you don't bring the blind man. To, are you what I'm saying? It's not normal. It's not normal. So now we ought to be reminded that the mandate that has been given has not expired. She, Lord Jesus. 
That's why he sent them two by two. So they'll be encouraged each other as they go to do the work. So that as you are to lay your hand and then you start doubting, the other one stretch out his hand. And as the other one stretch out his hand, your feet start getting back on. Are you know what I'm saying? And then you start stretching out your hand. A man of God said something very important. His name was T.L. Osborne. He went to Holland. We say Holland. I would say New Holland. And there, there were so many churches. And there were the churches of the hold. So they have finally become accustomed to just go, hear the word, and go home. So for several years, that's all they were accustomed to. And among them were many sick. Many. Thousands of thousands. And the man of God was an evangelist who were just going to in the, in the 50s. He was just going anywhere to preach. And, and he was going out, he was praying, preaching Christ. And after he was preaching Christ, he was preaching the work of Christ, which is healing, deliverance, uh, uh, God bless uh, healing and deliverance, hallelujah, miracles. And he went to Orleans. The day he arrived, there were more than 100,000 people who came to the convention, the conference. When he arrived, he started praying, speaking the word. And after he spoke the word, all he did was to call for the people to put their hands where they were healed. Uh, sorry, where they were sick thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who came some from the hospital on the what was that? stretcher some on the wheelchair some who came who had that what was that tempen temper how is that the temper here drum who had the here drum that were removed. People who do not see. On the thousands of the thousands. They came. And they were healed. He didn't touch nobody. He just preached Christ. And preached the faith of the healing. And they were healed. Hallelujah. If he did not preach that faith of for healing and miracles, that would have gone home the same way they were already in those churches. But why would that be others and not you? Why would that be others and not me? Because there is no requirement that there, some are disqualified and some are qualified. The only requirement is if you believe. So Paul say, for I believe God. Imagine you are a nurse, like literally, and then you are among sick. Like what an opportunity. God does not want you to pray so that the surgeon will be a good surgery. No! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I always say this one. I said, 
the church has a strong faith to pray that God will use the hand of the man to do the surgery so that the person will be healed. I said, but all that faith, can God do something? Has God able to grow feet? Yes. People who had eyes that were plucked out. Like I said, plucked out. Those eyes were recreated. Tell me how many surgeons in this life can recreate eye? Tell me how many. Tell me in this life how many surgeons can grow feet out of uh, somebody that is amputated. Tell me how many. There was a lady. She went to the prayer. They prayed for her. She had tumors or something, whatever, in her belly. And they put metal inside to hold her somewhere in the, whatever that is. So the man of God prayed for her and they said, you are healed. And she's like, ah. He said, go, you are healed. And now she said, okay, but I see I'm healed, but what, we do, what do we do about the metals that are inside now my body? He said, go, the Lord will take care of it. Jacko. The, the, the reckless man of faith. She went home. You know what happened? She got up out of her bed in the morning. All the metal were on the side here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Normally, you should be shouting, Jesus, amen, <laughs> by looking at me. <laughs> I said, she got up of a bed, and the metals that were in her belly, in her body, were all removed and put on the side. If God can do the miraculous, if God can raise Lazarus who was stinky, if God can raise the dead, if God can recreate the eyes of a blind, if God, Lord Jesus, the cut off, what's his name? Peter. Cut off the hearing of the soldier. This is an evidence of God recreating a part of a man. <laughs> if your expectation in that matter seed of faith you have, God said, with that little one, you can move mountain and then you want to move rocks. What happened? You will only move rocks. Because if in what you already have, all you want to do is to heal the headache. What you will see will be only the headache healed. Because what you have, if it's small, it can move big things. But it is up to you to say it is that big I want to tackle. If you have... But you want to tackle only the small, your faith will be trained only for the small. Say, Lord, help me. Lord. Say, Lord, help me. You know, imagine you're working with a group of sick people. 
So in your mind, he could be, <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Lord, help me. The world will tell you, no, be reasonable. Be wise. Don't be foolish. Let's have need of physician. Don't just be like, give them false hope. Isn't that what they say? They don't want people to pray because they say, well, if you do that, you give them false hope. And then that will grow in your mind and refrain you from doing what God says. But how many times have then gone to see doctors and the doctors told them, we have no idea what's going on with you? How many times? How many times they have gone to see the doctors and doctor told them literally, we can't help you. What you ought to know is that before Paul started speaking after the lost hope, the angel has to come to recreate that hope. Because that hope was the promise that was spoken before. That he has to rekindle inside of him so he can stand on that hope to see the promise. Because he know that God said it will come to pass. So the word is, he says, you shall lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. He says, you shall lay and they shall recover. Think of yourself like a med head. The doctor gives you a pill to give to the Patient. And the pill is intended to help the patient. What would you do? You would give the pill to the patient. Because you have received from your authority or from your, how will you call it? From your superior. Huh? Yeah. What you ought to do. And guess what? If you are a nurse and they were told to you to do that and you did not do you will be held liable. Am I right? So Christ tells you, lay hand on the sick so they recover. When you don't do it, who is liable? Hallelujah. Christ tells you, they shall recover. So all you have to do is to do what he told you to do to see what he said he will do. But if you don't do it, one will not see because you did not operate. One will not be delivered because you did not operate. One will not hear because you did not operate. And then you will just function as everyone else. It is accustomed. That's the state of the person. That's the way he goes. There is nothing I can do. It should not be so. Paul said, For I believe God that it shall be done unto us as he had said. If Christ did not say, that they shall, then you cannot do. Hallelujah. If he never said it, then we can't do it. Because our license to practice medicine is the word of God. Because he's a great physician by excellence. And how 
beautiful it is for him to not damage your body in order to heal you. You see what I'm saying? He does not need to damage your body before to heal you. So it's a win-win. You're not losing nothing. Hallelujah. Let me finish with this. One. There is a place where the faith of the person heals the person. Two. There is a place where your faith, amen, heals the person. Hallelujah. And three, there is a place where nobody faith. Just God sovereignty. So you cannot function on the two extreme. The other one over there is, oh, you don't have faith. And the other one over there, oh, it's not the will of God. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You are in the between. It is your faith. That you are to put on the work. And they shall recover. Let's pray. Father. If those who commit iniquity. According to your word operated in those wonders. If those that you have even chased out and cast out from your sight operated in your name, how much more those who are living and working in you. Your goodness went before men. And you heal and you did good everywhere. Father, you show us that it is sometimes because we do not stand up, because we don't get up. Paul was refraining, but the day he decided to stand up, that day, the circumstances that were holding them were cut off. Lord, I pray that each one of your children that we are will refuse to be held with the outside circumstances. We refuse to be anchored into the place where we were not called we refuse to be stagnant into a position you have not asked us to be. But we will stand up and we will indeed say, be of good cheer. For I believe God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that we will not be hearer of thy word only but we will indeed be doer. I pray, Father God, that uh, this word sound in our hearing, this word sound in our soul, this word sound in our spirit. So, Lord God, we shine not away from your assignment. Wherever we struggle, let your word rump up and clean up the struggle. Whatever, Lord God, we doubt, let your word clean up and rump up the doubt. It is given unto you to heal. It is given unto us to speak. So let us speak and see what your word says thou shalt do. In the name 
of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Amen.